as we get ready to get started, I will share just a quick note that today, for only the viewers that are on the live webinar, we are offering a moulage drill, and it's a moulage drill is actually one of the reasons that we're even conducting this mini series. A moulage drill at Joffe is basically a full-scale drill that allows us to moulage or actually apply makeup and a scenario to students, to staff, to faculty, sometimes even to parents. And what we'll do is we apply this makeup, we have them simulated injury, and then we apply a scenario to them as well. And so what will happen is the search and rescue team goes into the building as normal to find their people, um, and they actually find people. And then they bring those people out to the first aid team, they hand them over, and the first aid team has to figure out how to treat them. And then once the first aid team's done, they hand them back to the student attendance and supervision team, um, or attendance or supervision team, depending on the school structure. And those people have to account for them. And then ultimately, then those students are all handed off to the reunification team who actually has to figure out a way to deliver the students back to their parents. Um, it's really a pretty incredible drill and we are going to be offering it today. And in fact, I'll go ahead and put the offer up for you right now for anybody who'd like to get signed up for it now. We do have six spots available, essentially. Um, as of right now, we are going to try to put a couple more on, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and put that up there. And uh, for anybody who's with us, and, and again, this is only for you that are in the live webinar, um, you will be able to join us for that. At this point, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so good morning, good afternoon, and uh, for those of you watching on the replay, uh, possibly good evening. Uh, we are excited to be with you today and excited to be talking about the attendance team. My name is Chris Joffe, and I'm the founder and CEO of Joffe Emergency Services, which is, uh, at, uh, in today's world, essentially a school safety company. And what we do on a daily basis is we go in and we work with schools on all levels of preparedness from your basics, uh, as in checking to just make sure that you've got all of the basics in place, you've got fire extinguishers, you've got drills happening, you've got the ability to actually affect a command center um, and to push things out that need to be pushed out. Um, we look at smaller issues like individual child concerns, things where maybe a child just needs an action plan put into place so that they can be safe and um, they can ensure that they stay safe at school if they have a specific condition like maybe diabetes or uh, anaphylaxis or anything uh, of that sort. And then uh, we, we also look at those really, really big issues like uh, full-scale lockdowns where for one reason or another your entire community has to move into a lockdown um, and earthquakes and fires and things like that. And so today we're talking about the attendance team, which is a team that actually gets to activate in many scenarios, lots of different emergencies. And what they'll do is, well, I suppose I won't, I won't jump into that quite yet. Um, long story short, you'll hear a little bit more about what they do and who should be on that team in just a moment. Um, again, today we do have this moulage drill uh, only for the live viewers, um, so only for those of you that are with us now. And we will put this offer up again towards the end, um, so long as we have enough spots available. Um, and so take a look at that, um, consider that, and, uh, and try to think about whether or not you're actually ready to test all of these teams, all of these systems, all together, all at the same time. So with that, and without any further ado, I'd like to introduce Yudija, our Northeast safety consultant, and somebody who gets to deal with a little bit of a different type of emergency on a regular basis. Um, being in, in good old LA, we very seldom have to deal with weather or uh, frankly, any other environmental emergencies. Of course, we do have earthquakes, um, but uh, I'll go ahead and hand it over to you, DJ, who gets to actually work on attendance on a pretty regular basis. And welcome you, DJ. Thank you, Chris. Um, and thank you for all of the foreshadowing for some of the co uh, topics I'll be covering today. And thank you to everyone who is watching live. Thank you for everyone who's going to be watching this later, we recording. Chris mentioned that some people will be more watching this in the evening. If anyone is like me, they're probably going to be watching it at midnight because that's when I seem to get a lot of work done. I don't know what it is, but midnight is my most productive hour. And thank you, everyone. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this is part of our mini series on school safety where we are going to go through and talk about the different teams that you have 
or should have in place at your school. With a lot of these, the kind of point is for you guys to take a look and say, all right, this is the ideal, or this is what you know one setup is for, say, the search and rescue team, and kind of do a bit of introspect introspection and say, okay, you know, how is my school set up? Do we have room to grow? Do we have things we could share with other people? Attendance is going to be one of those ones that probably every school has some form of attendance. And I'm going to say every school has some form of attendance because taking attendance is part of your daily ritual. It is mandated in, I believe, every case that you have an idea of who is, uh, which students are there today. So attendance is uh, kind of in its own special slot of you guys have an attendance team. One of the things that we're going to talk about is that attendance is done every single day. It's the team that gets the most practice. And it, one of the things that when we come to a new school, a new client, we're doing assessment, everyone does some sort of attendance. But even though that they get the most practice, there are a lot of things that I always find missing. Um, and that's not to, you know, poo-poo anyone. That's just to show that even though attendance does get a lot of practice, there is always room for growth. So we're going to just hop in right now. Um, and I will say, just before I forget, if you are watching this live, um, feel free to ask questions through the chat on the right-hand panel. Um, I'm not able to see the panel, but Chris is, so we will try to answer those questions either live or we will send you a message afterwards so we can answer your questions. Uh, so just an overview. And um, again, if you've been watching this mini series, this should look a bit familiar. This is kind of the form that we're following for all these mini series. Tenants team, um, what do they do? What are their primary goals? Um, and again, attendance is going to be pretty self-evident, but there's a lot of tricky things that, you know, worth mentioning. Who's a good fit for attendance um, and essential equipment for this team? Who do they communicate with? And some challenges that the attendance team faces. So that's going to be the outline for today. Um, so what is the attendance team? And again, this seems pretty self-evident. Um, after an evacuation, once you've reached the assembly area, you make sure that everyone is there. And that is just checking against the list of who do you expect to be there at that point, who is present, who is not present. It seems very self-evident. And I can tell you for 100% of the drills that I have seen, some form of attendance has been done. A lot of times, it's not an exhaustive form of attendance. And what I will see every single time is, for a classroom, the students in that class are being checked for. But this is another way to think of attendance. Look at the opposite of it. The primary goal of the attendance team is to identify who has not made it out of the building and might still be in danger. So it's very good to know who is out, who is outside. But the more important question is who is still inside. And this is what we've been talking about already several times. There are more than just students on your campus. Um, other groups to think about, parents, contractors, other faculty and staff. And, you know, most of the time we don't think we need to account for our own adults. Um, and for a large part of the time, that is probably true. They are adults. They can handle themselves. They can go to the bathroom by themselves. They don't need someone holding their hand. So a lot of times we forget to account for them, but instead of thinking about a school, think about any public building. Adults get hurt, adults get trapped. Um, you know, picture an earthquake. And then think about, you know, the specialist who's sitting in, in their room by themselves. Um, who is accounting for that person? Who is making sure that they uh, got out safely? And again, you know, this is one of the times when I see Every drill I've been in, people take accounting for the students. Not everyone takes accounting for the faculty and staff. Um, also, what if you have uh, 
classrooms that have multiple teachers. And that's pretty common, especially in the lower age groups. So in preschools, you usually have two, maybe three teachers in each class, in each room. And so who is accounting for both teachers making it out of the building? Um, also talk about vendors. Then some people, uh, some schools have a outside company who does their food. So for instance, at my high school, we had Sage Dining. And um, who does Sage Dining report to? So let's say the math building was evacuated. All the math teachers eventually go up to the department head. And the department says, OK, I have all my math teachers here. But who does Sage Dining report to? And who is making sure that everyone from Sage Dining made it out there? Um, visitors and prospective students, they might not show up on any attendance sheet. And especially in an emergency when everyone uh, has a very high level of anxiety, those people can slip through the cracks very easily. And lastly, me, your safety consultant, please, please keep track of me. Um, I love it when people demand to see my driver's license when I come into a building. I like that. I want someone to know that I'm in the building. Um, please keep track of me and people like me. One-off people, you might not even know my name coming in. So let's say that you have uh, an AV company, company, someone to do your projectors. You might know that AV Solutions is sending a guy out to help you. You might not know the identity of that person. So you don't know what hours are there. You're not sure when they've come, when they've left. Very important that those people are accounted for. Um, what is done with information? Um, doing attendance is nice and easy, but you have to use that information effectively. Um, the attendance team is only effective if you actually communicate those results. Um, well, one of the things we're going to talk about, well, first of all, puts your incident commander's mind at ease. So that incident commander immediately is probably going to be the principal or president of your school. It will eventually be someone from 911 first responders, um, depending on your area. It might be a fire, fire whoever. Um, it's going to put their mind at ease. And the reason we talk about this, why it's so critical, um, not just knowing who is outside the building, but who might still be inside and who is not on campus, which we'll talk about later, is it avoids unnecessary and dangerous searches. It is dangerous to go inside of a building after an emergency, period, end of story. It's dangerous for any scenario where evacuation is necessary. And that's going to be pretty much any kind of emergency. So any kind of weather-related emergency, earthquake, tornado, hurricane, any building collapse, any structural things, any fire, any dangerous situation, it is dangerous to go into that building. And obviously, if there is someone stuck in the building, we want to get them out as soon as possible while the building is still a building or anything like that. And that, you know, there's this pressure on search and rescue, both from your team's perspective, so your search and rescue team, and from a first responder perspective. We want to get... Uh, anyone in the building, out of the building, while we still can, um, while, you know, as soon as possible. What, the worst case scenario, the worst kind of mess up from an attendance team point of view is, I don't know if Johnny made it out of the building. Johnny isn't here right now. He's not in my classroom. I don't know if he was in today. I'm really not sure, actually, if he was in or not today. You know, his parent might have picked him up because he was feeling sick. So I'd say 50-50 chance that Johnny's still inside. Well, you know, go to any decent person and say, there's a 50% chance that there's a five-year-old still in the building. And they are going to go in and search for that person. And it might be a wild goose chase. That is super, super dangerous. Um, and it's a poor use of resources because Maybe those people who are during search and rescue, maybe instead of searching for the maybe Johnny's here, they're search, they could search for Timmy, who we know is still stuck in the building. Or maybe that search and rescue team could be outside doing first aid. 
Um, and of course, you know, if they enter a, a building, um, then that puts them at risk. And I will repeat, um, we say this all the time, if the building is unstable, do not enter it. Do not put yourself at risk. Um, if you become a patient, you are no good to anyone else. Um, the first responders will take a lot more risks than um, your teachers are. And they're calculated risk, and they have higher training, better equipment. But still, um, we want to avoid unnecessary searches. So, again, you know, that information is going to be critical for avoiding dangerous situations. It is also going to help with the overall accountability for that entire uh, event. So at all points, um, we are going to be keeping track of where people are. From the EMS side, um, there is someone's job um, of just keeping track of where patients go. Let's say that we're transporting to three different hospitals. That's a likely scenario, especially if you're close by to three different hospitals. There's one person who has a list of everyone uh, who's at the scene, first responders, bystanders, teachers, and most importantly, patients. Where are those patients going? What is their things? Um, that is all going to start with the attendance team. That's going to start with, here's a list of who is here. Here's a list of who is injured. Here's a list of people who were in the building, now they're not. Here's a list of people who were in the chemistry lab. Um, we have evacuated the entire school, but these 10 people were in the chemistry lab when something happened. That is going to be a very critical part of tracking for the entire day. Um, so attendance, the process of taking attendance actually ends pretty early. Uh, this can be a very quick process. It should be a very quick process. But the information gained from the attendance is used throughout the duration. Um, so very important. Who's a good fit for this team? Um, like we keep saying, this is an experienced team. Um, you know, every morning you are taking attendance for who is in today. Um, that is mandated by law in many places, uh, especially um, for uh, kids trying to play hooky. We need to know who's in school today, who's not. Um, so very naturally, the teachers um, who are with a class they become the attendance team very naturally. So any teacher who is with a group of students, boom, they're attendance team. They are responsible for who's there. For all the people who are not part of a class, um, front desk personnel um, are very helpful. And again, this is really going to depend on your school, your culture. Um, when I went to uh, elementary school, there was a woman uh, at the front desk, Marianne. She was phenomenal. Um, I could go there, and it's, gosh, it's been 10 years now uh, since I went there. And Marianne knows me. She knows my family. She knows my grandparents' names because my grandparents would visit. And, I mean, this is 10 years ago. The front desk personnel often have a very good sense of who is in the building that day. Um, that could be students. And say, like, yeah, you know. I definitely saw Johnny come in today. Front desk people will also be, yeah, Johnny came in today, but I remember saying goodbye to Johnny as his mom took him home because he was feeling sick. Front desk personnel, especially if they are signing people in and out, which hint, hint, I think they should be, um, they will have an idea of if you need it, the safety consultant is in today. So also very important. Department supervisors. This goes back to keeping track of your faculty and staff. The adults in your school need to be accounted for as well. Someone needs to be making sure that all the adults are safe and accounted for. So very naturally, that's a department supervisor. Um, and if you can kind of visualize a hierarchy of your faculty and staff, and okay, you know, this person is in the math department, they report to the uh, math department chair and the math department chair reports to the head of academics you know that kind of reporting structure awesome for attendance um, so that's very natural and it's someone who knows everyone um, this is kind of a sweeping idea um, again for the last things I uh, mentioned 
these are very natural, they're already kind of in place, but someone who knows everyone, um, who has a good sense of who's in today, who's not in today. And if you guys probably pause and think, you can probably think of who that person is um, at your school. And again, I mentioned the uh, person who sat at the front desk at my elementary school, Marianne. She knew everyone. Um, she could tell who was uh, there that day. And uh, there's not anyone at the school who Marianne doesn't know. So that's useful. Um, essential equipment, this is not a equipment heavy team. With search and rescue, we talk about all the safety equipment and food supplies and water supplies and flashlights and crowbars. With attendance, it's really not that complicated. And it's really gonna depend on your school. Um, you could have a very awesome, super complex, um, high tech solution and um, you'll see on the left, that is a program called Swiped On. This is a tablet-based program where when you come in for the morning, you uh, go to the tablet that's sitting there at the front desk by the main door and you hit on. I've been at schools where uh, the teachers have their tablets. Each room has a tablet and the teachers use this kind of uh, software um, to keep track of who's there today. A lot of schools do this anyways for their students um, to keep track of attendance in the long term. So picture, you know, you want to track of how many absences have your children had, uh, you know, how many days have they missed. And that's something you guys very well might keep track of anyways. Um, we've seen programs like Blackboard, um, Noodle, uh, is one, sorry, Moodle. Um, so, a lot of the times though, those uh, applications are only being used for these students. Remember, you have other people on campus, me, uh, Chris. So make sure that your whatever system you're using for attendance is comprehensive. Um, you do not need to shell out the money for a super complex technology with tablets, iPads even. You know, you don't need to do that. A clipboard and pencil has worked for years, hundreds of years probably. Um, you keep track of who is on or off campus. And what I've seen at some schools is they have the really cool technology for the students. And then when I show up, there's a clipboard that I signed into. Um, what is the, the only things you really absolutely need to know is name, time in, time out. And it is very important to sign people out because again, what we talked about, you don't want to go on a wild goose chase for someone who is not there. This is very, um, you know, I like it when people say, yeah, I know we had this meeting that went half an hour longer, but I'm gonna have to ask you to sign out actually. I'm like, oh, awesome, people are keeping track of me. Um, again, this is uh, kind of just went over this, um, you need to have a list of who is on campus, who is not on campus at that point. You need to make sure that all parties are accounted for. Um, you need a way of marking whether they have made it out or not. So it's very nice and dandy if everyone is uh, listed on Blackboard on the internet, which theoretically you can access. Um, but you need a way of physically marking somewhere that, okay, everyone made it out. Here is a list of the people who are out of the building. And again, that's going to go back to um, kind of the overall accounting for that day. Um, so what, you know, as an EMS provider, if I go out there and we're setting up for a long-term event and um, I'm told everyone made it out, like, okay. How many people do you have right here? Um, you know, especially if it's a hazmat situation. Um, how many people need to be checked over uh, before we can clear that everyone's okay? So you need a way of marking that physically. You also need a way of communicating the results. A lot of times that can just be a walkover, say, hey, supervisor, this is my list. Um, some schools do use radio communications um, or phone communications during emergencies. 
And if that's the case, then you need to make sure that you are using uh, whatever system you have in place. Um, this is super, super, super important. Make sure you have backups, redundancies, um, and this is one of the things that will come out in a drill, a good drill. If you're using a paper or some sort of physical attendance list, that list does no good inside of the building. I have been to drills where um, I was accounted for. I was, you know, when I arrived at the building, someone took down my name, they checked my ID, they checked that I had an appointment, they wrote my name down, and then when the fire drill happened, no one is like, hey, is Yadidia here? Um, and the reason that happened was because that super awesome list with my demographic information, whatever, is still sitting on the front desk. It doesn't help. Um, this seems obvious, but it's something that you really need to make sure. So in an emergency, again, high level of anxiety, the person who is in charge of that assignment sheet needs to make sure they are grabbing that. And who knows what else they are grabbing. I mean, they have a radio to grab, a jacket, a go bag, uh, snacks, their computer, little Timmy in the attendance sheet. So that needs to make sure that happens. If you're using a more technology-based system, um, backups, I can't tell you um, the number of scenarios where you will not have access to the internet. Um, so it's wonderful if it lives in the cloud and you could theoretically access it from anywhere. But if you don't have internet, which you probably won't, um, you need a way of accessing that list. So um, if you are using some kind of tablet, the easiest solution is probably going to be to grab that tablet. Um, that's the same thing with the tens list. You need to make sure you grab it. There are systems where every five minutes or so it downloads a uh, list of who's there, who's not, so it can be uh, accessed offline. There are systems where um, the tablets that they use can also go over 4G, so over the cell network. That is a decent um, solution. You will not have Wi-Fi outside. Let me just say that. Um, you won't. Either you're too far away from your building, the electricity is off, the server room has been compromised. Don't count on Wi-Fi. Just don't. Um, 4G is a decent alternative. It is not a perfect one because in emergencies, um, especially emergencies that are going to affect an area versus just your school, so let's say an earthquake, um, the cell network might be down. The cell network might be overloaded. Um, following an emergency, um, everyone floods the cell network trying to call their loved ones, um, tell them that they're okay, tell them that they're not okay. Um, the cell network is going to be very slow. Um, so whenever preferable, you want something that can work completely offline if needed. Um, also, make sure your things are powered. That seems silly to say, but you know I've seen these kind of technologies, radios, phones, uh, tablets, um, and you know the person from the night before forgot to put it on the charger. Um, so make sure your stuff is charged. Um, how does attendance fit into the big picture? Uh, the way I like to think about attendance is attendance is one of the last parts of the initial phase of emergency. So when we talk about the natural phases of any emergency, there is whatever event is causing the emergency, and then there's your immediate action steps. So that might be a lockdown. It might be shelter in place. It might be uh, duck and cover, you know, whatever your immediate action is. Most emergencies are going to then move into evacuation. Uh, for some levels of movement restriction, that's not important. Um, you know, if you went into secure campus uh, because of something going on down the road, I mean, unless it's a secure campus, you probably aren't going to evacuate. Um, but most of the emergencies we talk about, you're going to do an evacuation. Once you have done your evacuation, you're doing attendance. 
And from attendance, you're going to be doing a lot of other things. Um, search and rescue, first aid, reunification, all those kind of things. So that's where attendance fits into that picture. Um, so again, the way I think about it is you have your immediate action steps. Evacuation is usually going to be part of your immediate action steps. You do the attendance, and from that, you do your next action steps. Who does the attendance communicate with? Um, super important is your incident commander, whoever is in charge of that. Um, and what might happen is you kind of do a tiered structure according to the incident command system, which is the system set up by FEMA um, to help manage events. And it's more from a 911 point of view, not so much from a school point of view. But no one person should really be um, having more than six people reporting to them. Um, it's just not a good use of their time, their resources, and it's going to get all garbled up. So what you don't want is 50 students, uh, sorry, 50 teachers reporting to the incident commander. What you'll probably have, what you should have, is more of a tiered system. So, you know, again, the uh, someone from attendance, you know, a teacher does their attendance and reports it to their immediate supervisor, who reports it to their immediate supervisor. So picture the preschool student, uh, the preschool teachers, I keep seeing students, the preschool teachers report to the head of the preschool who reports to the head of the school. Um, that's a very natural thing that will eventually get to the incident commander. Obviously, they're going to be uh, talking with search and rescue. Um, and that may or may not go through the incident commander or whomever else. Um, but the information is going to search and rescue. Similarly, it's going to go to first responders. Um, and that's, again, who is here, who is not here. Um, and that kind of uh, accountability. So let's move to the top three challenges of the attendance. Um, keeping track of students while not in uh, the main room. Um, and again, top three challenges are kind of the thing to think about. We've gone over the primary goals of the attendance team, so I don't want to pretend that, you know, completely switch tracks. But these are three things that um, we see a lot, um, and definitely three ways that people uh, have room to grow. Um, so keeping track of students while not in the main room. So uh, whether they are specialists um, or bathroom or in between classes. And so for the specialists, picture the scenario where uh, this is especially for like elementary school. Picture the scenario where you guys do the most fabulous attendance in the world at the beginning of the day. Um, you keep track of their mood and how much they had to eat that morning. And you put that all in a journal and it's sitting in your classroom right next to the door next to the fire alarm and it's, you know, beautifully placed. And then the kids go to the art teacher and the art studio and then there's a fire the kids evacuate and that journal is nowhere to be found um so how are you going to get that attendance list to where it needs to be um the easiest solution that um i recommend if you're using paper pencil uh, attendance list is all those lists should be communicated to the front desk that list should not be communicated halfway through the day. Then you are not accounting for half of the day. Uh, that list, preferably within the first hour of school, needs to make it to make its way to the front desk. And then that front desk personnel needs to remember to grab all those lists and those dream journals. Um, that's going to be the best way of keeping track of those kind of things. Um, so if they're in a the specialist, if they're in the bathroom or in between classes, you get a lot of, okay, who is responsible for the children now? Um, and the answer is both. Um, if uh, students are in between their main room and the specialist, both the specialist and the main room teachers are responsible for them. If they're in between classes, then they should go to, uh, depending on where they are in the building, they should go to that evacuation point. Um, if there are homeroom teachers, so uh, you know every morning they meet in a group of ten, then maybe you have it set up that that homeroom teacher is responsible for them. 
You know who is not on campus? Um, we've talked about this uh, a lot already. So what you want to avoid is saying, all right, 90% of my classroom is here. That 10th kid, I forget if that kid left today. Um, or, you know, there was a field trip. I forget whether he was on the field trip or not. Um, leaving early. You know, let's say that you have your dream journal um, at the front desk, the dream journal, meet it outside, and um, you're going through the journal of all your lovely children, and you say, hmm, Johnny's marked down here, but you say Johnny left early. How sure are you that Johnny left early? Are you willing to risk Johnny's life on Johnny left early? Because it's not written down in the dream journal. So... Um, so when people leave, make sure that they have that on paper as well as in spirit. And again, um, we want to avoid unnecessary searches and anxiety. And again, um, this is the biggest problem that I see with attendance scenes is make sure everyone is accounted for. Please account for me. I will not be offended. Uh, I will not be offended if you account for me. I will greatly enjoy it. Um, I say this in caps, not in caps, in bold. You are responsible for the people on your campus. And that is a fact. Um, there is an inherent expectation that the owner of a building, the manager of a building, is responsible for the people in that building. And it's, you know, if I were in a mall, um, I would want the mall staff, the mall security, to be looking out for my safety. Um, you know, schools are special, but you cannot only be focused on students. You are responsible for me. Um, in when we talk about mass casualty situations, um, one of the things that always makes things confusing is people just leaving. Um, and you know, I'll say, all right, I have these twenty people in the delayed care area. So they have injuries, but they're not going to die anytime soon. I have 20 people. 10 minutes later, I look over and there's only 18 people. Well, where did those two people go? Um, I need to account for them. They were my patients. So that's stressful. It's stressful when people self-present to uh, ERs. Um, I definitely prefer them going to the ER than home, but you know, we strategize of you know, we have 10 people, we'll send five people here, five people there. And then when people self-present, um, it throws everything off. Um, what I've seen at fire drills is a parent was going to pick up their kid anyways right then. So they just take their kid and go. Well, did anyone watch that kid go? Did anyone make sure that they were leaving with an appropriate party? Are we sure that that parent and student made it out? You need to keep track of these people. Um, and when I'm at an evacuation, either a drill or actual thing, I am going to insist that the parent stay until they are accounted for and cleared. Um, I don't ever want to be at the situation where it's like, gosh, I saw Johnny's mom. I know Johnny's mom was picking Johnny up because Johnny was sick, but you know I don't know if they made it out. I don't want that, or I don't want. I'm not going to rely on it. I think Johnny's mom left. I, I I'm pretty sure, so we're fine. The way you know, I'm not going to let that sound my conscience of. You know, I think Johnny's mom made it out of the building. Um, you need to account for everyone in your building. That is your responsibility. Um, you need to do that in whatever way makes sense to you, um, whether it's a combination of technology um, or paper and pencil, but I can't hammer this point in enough because in my mind, this is the largest challenge that attendance faces. Um, so that sounds super serious, and I hate ending on such a serious note. Um, so what is the goal of the attendance team? Again, um, that is to make sure uh, people have made it out of the building. Make sure you have an accounting of who is out of the building, who is in the building, who is not in the building. Um, attendance team is a very natural makeup 
um, people who uh, are anyways responsible for groups of people, either students or adults. Um, I should also note that very often, especially in smaller populations, you're going to have some um, crossover. You'll have people who are on one team and then on another team. So attendance can be done very quickly and should be done very quickly. So what we have seen is um, attendance will be done, accounted for, and then uh, some people from that team will hop on to social rescue or some other team. Um, and that's a very natural thing to happen. Central equipment. Um, again, the biggest thing is whatever you use to uh, keep track of attendance, make sure you are able to access it. Make sure it comes out of the building with you. Make sure you're able to access it without relying on Wi-Fi. Um, and then again, common challenges that we find um, making sure you have uh, keeping track of students who um, are not in their main area, making sure you are keeping track of everyone who is on campus, not just your students, um, but your adults. We care for your adults. Um, and like we said, making sure you know who's not on campus. So thank you again. Um, as usual, we offer uh, free assessments for those of you who are not our clients. Also today for the People who are watching live, we're offering uh, for us to come out and do moulage drills. Uh, and if Chris is able to, I think he's going to put this in the chat on the right side. Thank you again for everyone who keeps coming and watching these webinars. I love putting them on. We love doing them. It's a great service that we do for everyone. You can find us at joffeemergencyservices.com. If you have questions, you can email us at schools at joffe schools at joffeemergencyservices.com. Um, we'll keep this open for a second so you can uh, chat in the right-hand side if there are any questions. And again, we look forward to doing this again next week. We will be doing reunification. We'll be hearing from me again. And uh, we hope you come out for all of our webinars and rewatch them over and over and over again. And with that, I am done for today. Um, Chris, if you have anything to say. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Adija. And I will just end with a quick reminder um, for those of you that weren't with us during the first of the this mini series, um, you may not remember how, or you may just not have heard, how to best leverage these webinars. And so I just want to remind you of that, or per, per, perhaps even share with you uh, the way that we envision you, anyway, um, leveraging these webinars best. So specifically for this 10-part mini-series, and today we're on part three, attendance. Um, next week we'll be on part four, reunification. Um, what we're looking for, or what we're envisioning, is that you watch this webinar once with us, ideally live, so that you can actually ask questions and engage with us. Um, and for most of the questions that came in today, they were pretty specific, so we'll be reaching out to a couple of you by email. Um, there weren't a huge number of questions. So um, for those that did come in, we'll, like I said, we'll go ahead and reach out to you by email and make sure that we really understand what what those questions were before we, we jump out and answer them. Um, the second time that you watch this webinar, we envision you watching it probably not live. Um, in fact, definitely not live, since it'll only be live once. Um, and it, sort of applying the scenarios that we talk about through the webinars to your specific school. And then the third time that we envision you watching these, and, and we know three times is a lot, especially given that you know they, these mini series tend to be somewhere from 30 to 45 minutes a piece. Um, but what we envision is that you're actually presenting this information to the various teams that we're talking about, and that you're using the webinar to actually help everybody on that team understand their roles and responsibilities, understand why they were put on that team, and ultimately become a better member of that team and more able to provide good quality work on that team. So put differently, um, your next steps as we see them are to watch this again and really apply these theories to your school specifically, and then to watch this webinar, but watch it with the rest of the attendance team. And in doing so, answer questions that they have. And if you're unable to or you're struggling to, um, shoot us an email at schools at joffeemergencyservices.com, and we'll be more than happy to go over those with you. Um, finally, um, as always, again, we can't tell you how much we appreciate you being with us today on this webinar. 
Um, that assessment is available um, if you wish, and the best way to get that for to the rest of this mini-series will be to email schools at joffeemergencyservices.com. Let us know you're interested, and we'll go ahead and get you set up with one. Um, for today, and actually for the rest of this mini-series, uh, we'll be filling out our moulage drill calendar. So for those of you that don't work with us yet and haven't done a moulage drill yet, um, we do have a couple of spots available, and so we're going to continue to attempt to uh, get those folks um, onto the calendar and make sure that we can actually get a consultant reserve for you and uh, provide a moulage drill for you on campus. Um, so with that, uh, we'll go ahead and say thank you all so much for being with us. Uh, we can't wait to talk with you next week. And remember that we will be here every Thursday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, and so if you haven't yet subscribed for every webinar, there is an auto subscribe feature that will allow you to just get the reminders for every webinar that we do. Um, with that, again, I'll say thank you so much. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next Thursday. Thank you.